joins us all the way from Israel. Robbie, welcome to the show. Thanks for being a high roller, man. My pleasure, Derek. Great to be on the show. Hey, listen, the app, we'll start with that. It's called Poker Notes Live. Players are able to download it, right, and then take notes on their opponents as they go live at the table. And those notes are very important. Can you tell us how this app came to be? I used to play a lot of online poker, and, uh, and you know, I'm sure a lot of people before Black Friday in America, of course, did. And one of the things that's built into the software is the ability to take a note. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward, and the software sort of records everything everything's going on with each hand. So anytime you wanted to take a note, it's right there for you. When you go and play live poker, you know, nothing really records the action for you. And the only way to really take notes, at least up until I uh, came up with this idea, was a pen and paper or maybe a dictaphone or something. And I'm like, you know, we're in the 21st century. There's got to be a better way. And uh, after brainstorming a little while, a couple friends of mine, uh, you know, we sort of came up with the idea of, hey, you know, you should make an app. So they're like, you know, you got our blessing, go for it, because they know how into poker I am. And I was lucky enough to find a developer. He's uh, a good, uh, now we're a good friend, we're partners. He uh, lives in Milan, Italy, Milan, Italy. He's the developer, I'm the marketer, and we found, you know, we both love poker. We both like this idea of enabling people to take notes in a high-tech way on their smartphone or on their tablet. And it took about a year's worth of effort, but it made it happen, both uh, for Android and for iOS. So on my site, cardplayerlifestyle.com, I have a dedicated page where you can learn everything about the app. Uh, you basically go to the homepage, cardplayerlifestyle.com, and look in the search box for Poker Notes Live, and that, uh, that'll, that'll give you everything you need to know. We have provided the ability to have uh, customizable icons, uh, and also just built-in icons. You have, like you said, you can take your initial observations and use our little fish icon or a monkey icon for, like, loose aggressive or sorry, maniac or something like that. You have an ABC icon to label someone. Those will be sort of like the first thing that you would do, uh, like, as a quick thing. You know, between hands, when you're not in the hand, after you've made your mental observation, while it's going on, you use that downtime to take the note. And then as the session goes on, you can expand your notes on each particular person. And if you go, you know, I would assume, you know, you go to your local casino, whatever it is, however often it is, you'll see the same people from time to time. Uh, with the premium version of the app, you can call up your notes on that person. Remember, you know, that'll sort of give you the, the cliff notes on, oh, yeah, I remember all that stuff about that guy. Because mental notes will take you only so far within each individual session. But if you don't remember every single person, either it's hard, there's a lot of people out there. So that's what the uh, player list is for, and you can just keep on adding to notes just like the online software allows you to do. Well, you know, it's so important because you sit down, you start a session, maybe you weren't scouting the table, but you recognize someone, you call up those notes. If you're involved in a hand with that guy, one or two hands in, I mean, you've got to rely on those notes, and it will lead to more profit down the road. I would think so. And, you know, besides just taking the notes during the game, reviewing your notes after the game, in between sessions, I think that's where you can really get a lot out of it. Just like when, you know, you read a poker book or a poker magazine to try to learn a tip or two, reviewing your notes, just like when you go to, to class in college, you know, you take notes, and you can't just go up, show up to the next class and just assume you remember it all. You review your notes, and that's the best way you could really uh, improve your own game, you know, take notes about yourself. And, uh, of course, improve your game against your opponents, and hopefully your notes are, are right, assuming they are, then yeah, for sure, you save yourself some money and probably make yourself some money. Now, I know the response to this has been absolutely terrific. i got to believe online players love it because now they can transition and take their notes with them to live play. What about the recreational player, you know, the average Joe Blow who goes out once a week on a Friday night when his wife's playing the slots. Uh, what kind of response are you getting from those guys? Well, I would say, actually, that everyone who has heard of the app and who has tried the app, I'd say, I don't know, 90% or so, the reaction has really been great. You know, we've had the people all to find something wrong with it. But 90% or so has, has really been, wow, this is a great app. The obstacle, I guess you could say, we're facing is that it's a new idea. People are not yet used to the idea that you would take notes at the poker table in a live setting. They're used to doing it online. But live... You know, no one's going to think, oh, take a pen and paper, I'll look like a nerd or, you know, or a dictaphone or something like that. What we're trying to do, the, you know, the mission statement, I guess, is to get the word out that you ought to take notes. Not just, you know, okay, you ought to, but here, we're giving you the tool that you could do it with. And, you know, everyone's got a smartphone these days. Some people carry around their tablets with them. Instead of doing 
doing, you know, listening to, you know, you can listen to music, but instead of just fooling around on your phone, checking your Facebook in between hands, use that dead time. And that's what we're trying to, you know, help you do. We're giving you the ability to do it. And whether you're a pro or a recreational player, to get back to your exact question, why wouldn't you take advantage of something like this? And that's also why we have a free version that I encourage everyone to try out. If you like it, great. If you don't, you don't have to. And if you do find it really useful, you'll probably want to upgrade to the premium version. And, you know, uh, depending on how often you go and, and play, uh, it'll be that much more useful for you. The blog. And we're on the line with Robbie Straczynski, the founder of CardPlayerLifestyle.com, a wonderful blog. Top 30 in the world. That's quite amazing because there are a million of these blogs out there. Yep, for sure. Um, I mean, it started uh, back in 2009. Uh, a friend of mine was like, hey, Robbie, you know, you follow poker. Why not start a blog? And I was like, well, I don't really know anything about blogging and the technical back end of WordPress. He says, oh, well, that's the stuff that I know, and I know all about search engine optimization. We'll make a good team, right? So the first thing I wrote was like, okay, summary of poker. That was like my first post back in November. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, as though I knew everything. I mean, I, I knew a lot, but I, did, I didn't know. I didn't find my voice. I didn't know my niche and my audience. And, you know, little by little, you know, I was so excited the first month. I think we got like 100 hits on the blog. It was like, wow, you know? And then the next was another hundred. It was like, okay, where, when are we going to start seeing this traffic? And I realized, you know, I didn't enter in 2003 at the boom. This is 2009. People are looking for something really specific. What could I offer them that poker news and poker listings, you know, bluffs, you know, that they're not offering? So slowly but surely, week after week, month after month, I found my voice and I feel that recreational poker players are the ones who want to read things that are not just, oh, okay, so-and-so won a million dollars in the latest tournament. Let's read stuff like, you know, how to tell the difference between a live and an online poker player and what to do about it. How do you play against famous poker players? Uh, the top 10 most frustrating things uh, about playing poker. You know, stuff like that, which is just common interest, I think, to anyone who plays. That's, that's the, the voice I tried to, to find. And, you know, when 2011, mid-2011, I went out on my own. I brought my partner out. And I really have um, found my voice. I found my audience. My Twitter following has really been growing. Uh, a huge thing happened for me a couple weeks ago that Daniel Negron followed me on Twitter. Um, I got Joe Hashem following me. And, you know, I, I'm not name dropping for no reason. It really has been a, a four year long journey thus far. And I really do love it because if I didn't, I would have stopped after the first month. I was like, well, what, 100 people are listening? La di da. Goodbye. I love poker, and this is a great way for me to get it out. And, you know, seeing the response and the increased traffic month after month uh, is really gratifying, and it keeps me motivated to provide, you know, hopefully good content for my readers. You know my story, Robbie, and you and I are kind of a kindred spirit because I take the same approach. I mean, my website, my blog is basically anything I find interesting about poker, about gambling, some crazy roulette win. I mean, things I find interesting are going to go on there because I feel like I'm a huge poker fan. I don't want to discuss strategy all the time, although it's nice to read once in a while. But I like the interesting tidbits. And I find, you know, I just got back from the Commerce for a four-night stand, and when I'm there... I'm either sleeping or playing, so I'm at the table a lot. And I get to hear a lot of things. You, you see some people going on tilt, getting angry. You see other people talking about a book they just read. I mean, there's all kinds of interesting things. The dynamic at that table is what I'm trying to bring to my website. And I guess for you, it's kind of the same thing, anything you find interesting. And I'm sure when a Daniel Negreanu or a Joe Hashem follows you and these little milestones, it is pretty exciting, isn't it? Oh, 100%. It's really like wow, they're listening, and, you know, I guess this word is spreading. It, it really is, uh, in a way, a snowball effect. You know, when you're reaching, and if I'm not reaching 100,000 ears, I'm reaching some good quality ears, and if they like it, it which, thank God, you know, it's been wonderful, they have, and they do spread. Uh, one of the things I did, for example, was about a year ago, actually a year, yeah, a year and like three days ago, I interviewed Daniel McBrown's personal assistant, Patty Landis. She's a great person. And we've been in touch ever since, uh, about a year now. I figured, like, well, that's what Poker News isn't doing. You know, they're interviewing the ground, and he's all over the place, and he's an amazing ambassador for the game. <clears throat> but let's look for another angle on this. This is someone who spends, you know, when he's in Vegas, when he's at home, not on the road, 
sees her all the time. Sees him in his skivvies and everything, you know? What an interesting person. Another thing you've done, too, that I think is very interesting and I have yet to tackle um, is poker vacation information. Uh, and it's very important to people that are planning a trip because there's so many poker fans say, do I take a cruise? You know, I've been to Vegas eight times. Where can I go to have a nice gambling and poker experience with a nice vacation as well? And I know that's been very popular on your blog. Yes. Uh, well, it actually started from a, a technical standpoint. I was trying to to find a way, well, what could I rank well for that I'm not doing, you know, not in big competition, you know, I, you know, I want to be on page one when someone searches for a poker term, and, you know, one of the things that popped in my head was poker vacation, and I looked into it, did a little of research, and I was like, there's not much information out there that covers the term poker vacation, and, you know, anyone who, you know, even if you're a recreational player, you don't just go and, you know, blow money in the pit all the time with the roulette wheel and blackjack, you want to take a poker vacation. So that was actually a big project of mine a couple years ago to, uh, I don't know, I must have put up like two or three dozen pages about the hotels in Las Vegas, in Atlantic City, in Lake Tahoe, uh, even in Laughlin. And uh, I got a, you know, quite a few pages there to give you, you know, information about where you could stay, where you could play. I tried to keep it updated. Originally I had, a, for example, a page about the Tropicana Poker Room in Las Vegas, but that's since closed. So, uh, you know, I try to keep it up to date. Uh, as much as possible, and uh, yeah, you know, every so often, it's not just popular in terms of, uh, of people visiting and, you know, looking at the information, I also put some hotel booking information there that you could stay where you're going to play, so you don't have a long walk or a long drive. Uh, to the place where you want to play poker. Very smart indeed. So let me put you on the spot then. Uh, poker Joe in North Carolina uh, wants to go on a vacation to play some poker and have some fun. Where would you tell him to go? That's a good question. Um, I have to say Vegas. Um, I mean, there's plenty of amazing places to play poker. Uh, actually, two of my favorites is one, is, like you said, in the commerce uh, in L.A., which is Poker Heaven and Harrah's in Atlantic City. I actually really, really love those places in terms of just the pure poker experience. But when you say to have a great time and love it, etc., I would say Vegas just because of the variety. You know, sure, in Atlantic City, just say, for example, you have 11 poker rooms, and they're relatively close to each other, but, you know, what else are you going to do there? L.A., the same. It's, you know, 200 tables, a sea of poker. Yes, there's plenty to do, but you've got to drive from place to place. Las Vegas, the beauty of it is the density of the poker rooms. You can walk up and down the strip, and you're going from one to the other to the other, and every single one of the rooms is different, first of all. And when you're not playing poker, you have a pool scene, you have a nightclub scene, you have the best musical acts in the world, you know, coming and visiting. It really is the entertainment capital of the world. And that, you know, the, as an aside, that's also what sets Las Vegas apart from Macau, which is, you know, booming in terms of gambling revenue, et cetera. But once you finish gambling, they have nothing to do. That's the beauty of Vegas, and that's what I think uh, is the charm of the city. So Joe uh, from, I don't know where you said, but uh, I would recommend that he goes to Vegas to play poker if it's just for a specific poker vacation. You're based in Israel right now, but I know you lived in L.A. for quite a while. You've been in Israel for 15 years. Uh, you brought up the commerce, or maybe I brought up the commerce, but I love that place. I'm in L.A. right now at my sister's place, so I get a, a lot of opportunity to go down there and play. You know, the first time, I, I want you to describe for our listeners the first time you walk in the commerce, which, by the way, is the world's largest poker room. Can you tell us the atmosphere and the ambiance in that place? I mean, isn't it incredible? Uh, wow. <laughs> I'm usually very good with words, but uh, I have to say, the first time I walked in there, I was rendered speechless, and it was just unbelievable. I mean, Los Angeles is obviously one of the largest cities in the United States, and you have the most important ingredient in poker, which is the liquidity. You have three, four, you know, seven, uh, seven million in the entire LA metropolitan area, I guess. And you know, that's why it's the biggest. There are always people 24 seven who want to play and that's where they are. It's not, you know, the, the people who founded that place, they really got their niche. Just like Poker Star deals with poker only and not all the other casino games. You have a couple like California games like, uh, I think it's Spanish 21 that they have there, but the entire focus of that place is poker only. It really is uh, heaven on earth for a poker player, whether it's a professional or whether it's recreational. I just like, when I first walked in there, I just remember I was like astounded. It was a sensory overload. And they're not just playing Hold'em, they're playing Omaha, they're playing Raz, they're playing The Duty, they're playing Stud, you know, everything. And it really is just amazing to behold. 
Uh, and I'm not like a big high limit player or anything, but you could watch, you could see, and they're there. They're not like cordoned off in an Ivy room or a Bobby's room or something like that. It really is just a, uh, I guess, it's an ideal. It's an ideal. I wish every room could be as good and as big as, uh, as the comics. Yeah, walking from the hotel to the poker room. Oh, there's Barry Greenstein. Oh, there's Johnny World Hennigan. Look to the valet. That's Greg Mueller. I mean, you really can get close to these guys, and that room is just amazing. What APC is going on right now. Absolutely. I'm going there uh, March 8th. Well, I'll be there after the LAPC, but I was there last week, and it's just buzzing. It's just amazing. Now, listen, the app is called Poker Notes Live. Uh, the blog is cardplayerlifestyle.com. I want to ask you about the name, Card Player, real quick. Was there any strategy involved with the name sounding familiar to Card Player Magazine, which has been around forever? Um, Not specifically the magazine, but uh, when my friend and I, when we wanted to co-found the site, we were sort of looking around for some domain names, and part of it was just, okay, what's not taken yet? But not, again, not specifically the Card Player Magazine, but I thought I wanted to be something different than Poker This or Poker That. And what popped into my head was the lifestyle aspect. And even though I didn't necessarily know who my readers were going to be or what my niche was going to be, I did think that lifestyle is an ingredient that the site didn't focus on as much just then. So that's why we went with that name at the time. Yeah, because it proved to be a good choice. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it really does fit, and it makes sense because that's what you're talking about. Social media, I know you're growing. Uh, we're going to have links to your Facebook and Twitter on the page as well. How do you attempt to use social media? Got to be careful here because I might steal some ideas. But how do, you, how, how do you attempt to use social media in conjunction with your app and blog? Because these days, it's just vital, isn't it? 100%. And don't feel guilty whatsoever about stealing ideas. I'm happy to give them to you. And it's, it's a, it's a, I'm not joking. It's really, that's what I've discovered over time in social media. Uh, not just sharing is caring, but sharing is vital. Because when you give people, when you share with people, they want to share back with you. And it's really, you know, like there's something in SEO, search engine optimization, called link building, that you're trying to connect with sites and exchange links with them, and I'll do this. It's very technical. Social media really is the proper type of link building. You're bonding with someone. I mean, how did I find Daniel McGrath's assistant, Patty Landis? I asked her on Twitter, hey, would you like to do an interview? And, you know, she said, sure, I'd love to. And, you know, we sort of went back and forth. And when I say we've been in touch for the last year, it's been very much through social media. Like, I didn't, it wasn't a one and done, okay, we're done. You know, she continued reading my stuff. She continued retweeting. And every time I just said, thank you so much. It's very nice. And a couple months later, I was like, how you doing? It was her birthday or something. And that's a real relationship. And that's what I think uh, is the key to social media. And as far as, you know, the, the blog and uh, the app go, every time I've got a new article, I try to let people know about it, obviously, but not just tweet it out one time. Try to find a different way to introduce it. Like, if I'm saying... Um, you know, I'll use that same example as before, the top 10 frustrating things in poker. I'll first say, okay, new blog post is out, hot off the presses, and I'll put the link there, right? Then, you know, a couple hours later, because Twitter, of course, is 24-7, I'll put out something of, did you realize that, you know, bubbling is the most frustrating thing in poker? And I'll put the link again. The next time, a day later, I'll be like, you know, this is pretty frustrating, but didn't make our list of the top 10 things gotcha. uh, that are frustrating. So every time you do something like that, you never know who's going to click on it. And when you got 100 fans or 500 fans in this 24-7 world all over the place, uh, you never know what time they're going to click on it. So you just got to be persistent. And that's one aspect. And just with regard to the engagement, that's pretty key because when someone else is sharing it, I think it's, you know, just nice to say thank you for it, and that's how you'll build bonds, and that's how you'll build yourself an audience over time. I, I, I know you like wrestling. I mean, I'm a huge MMA fan. UFC specifically, we've got uh, Chris DeBeer from South Africa. He provides us regular predictions. That's how I've incorporated one of my loves into the site, sports betting, UFC. Now, how did you, how did you come to love wrestling, of all things? <laughs> Wow, you did your research, sir. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> when I was, when I, was um, I don't know, eight or nine years old, uh, I think eight years old, that's the first time I got introduced to the WWF at the time, the WWE. Uh, I remember seeing uh, the Macho Man Randy Savage, uh, of blessed memory, <laughs> I think. 
and, and Hulk Hogan, the mega powers were going to explode in WrestleMania five, And that just got me hooked. And I really have uh, been a uh, professional wrestling fan ever since. I don't really let on to it too much. But uh, when you say, how did I, how did I incorporate it? Uh, a while ago, I said, hey, there's got to be some sort of a common denominator here. And I was able to find one. I was like, well, in principle, what? Ten wrestlers would I love to sit with? <laughs> that's uh, great. And that's uh, that's basically the article I wrote. I wrote, you know, the top ten wrestlers I'd love to sit with, and I outed myself as a longtime fan for 24 years, and this is the first time I've ever spoken about it. And that one really got a lot of traction, and it inspired me to the next week write the first article. Is what ten wrestlers would I never ever <laughs> sit with? That's okay, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you three. Greg Valentine, okay. because. Greg Valentine, because, sure, sure. yeah, if you keep raising him, he'll eventually just fall flat first on his face. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin, because I believe he'll go on yeah. tilt, right? And then the claw, the claw, Baron Von Raschke, because I believe uh, I'd be able to see his hand and have the advantage there. Uh, listen, this, is, uh, this has been a great talk. Uh, real quick, uh, I know you've interviewed a lot of players, November Niners, big stars, personal assistants. Um, real quick, your take on online poker. Uh, in the future, uh, it's not legalized yet in the U.S., and I understand the uh, same, same thing for Israel. We haven't got a lot of time here, but uh, just what's your take on the future of online poker? Well, in the U.S., actually, it is legal in three states, in Nevada, in New Jersey, and Delaware. Um, I think the future looks bright, but you know, I say that with an asterisk of it ain't going to be what it used to be. But I do think the future looks bright because... I feel that so many people want it in so many states, and I think also the legislators of each state slowly but surely will realize, hey, this is good tax revenue for us. It's in our interest to work together. So I guess the hope would be is that in places like Nevada, New Jersey, Delaware, and whatever new uh, state comes on board in terms of um, utilizing it, they would have to work together because, like I said, in terms of live poker and, of course, online poker, the number one ingredient for it to work for anybody is liquidity. You need to have enough players available. And when you have that, like, you know, what was the beauty of when everyone was playing on Stars and Party and all that stuff, uh, you know, back before Black Friday, people were online 24-7. There was always a game going on. If you're limited to one state and one time zone, then you're going to have dead time at 4 o'clock in the morning. You need to have people on in as many places as possible, and the more that legislators and lobby, you know, uh, people who are advocates of the game, players, fans, recreational, uh, and professional, are pushing people, are pushing their uh, representatives to do this. I think that over time, it's going to take some time, but I think over time we're going to see that online poker will grow and resurge again. Not necessarily to the level it used to be, but it'll be better because it's regulated and people will be paying taxes, et cetera. You know? This has been awesome, man. I really appreciate it. Robbie Straczynski is the founder of Poker Notes Live and the blog, CardPlayerLifestyle.com. If you have not checked it out, please do. If you want to find the app, visit CardPlayerLifestyle.com and download it. You can get a free version, and it will help your live game, trust me. Robbie, thanks for being a high roller, man. Continued success in the future. My pleasure, Derek. Thanks so much for having me on.